Every artist I've created a bit in War for and got them in the deals worth seven figures, eight figures. Guess what? They're willing to listen to me because we're at the mercy of the ad platform. What's up, what's up, what's up? I'm Brian Man Sean. And I'm Conrad. And we are back with another episode of No Labels Necessary Podcast. You can catch us on every place you stream your podcast. We don't do every Tuesday and Thursday no more. So right, catch us when you catch us. Up. You know, Spotify, <laughs> YouTube, Apple Music. This is the intersection of creativity and currency, and today we have a very special guest. She is the guru. This man does it. He's a digital marketer. He's broken artists over and over and over again. Yeah, yeah. It's always a pleasure to get up with brand man Sean and Corey. Yo, I, I, I really don't link up with a lot of marketers like that. You know, you, you hop on social media, you see everybody got a little page where they so-called giving advice on how to help artists. Because, yo, a lot of these guys, don't, they're not in the field really doing it. Brand man, Sean and Corey, I know they actively do this. So it's always a pleasure. Whenever they say, yo, let's link up, I'm here. I'm going there. Appreciate, appreciate that, man. Appreciate that. And same to you, man. Like, you've, like, just off of ads alone, that's your bag. So yeah. we got to talk about ads. Yeah, of course. Right? Yeah. Because you have blown artists up off of ads. Right, right, right. And this is something that I know you've heard before. Ads don't work. Ads don't work. Mm. Right? Yeah. So, like, I want to get into the entrepreneurial side of your, of your career right. and some of the other na natures, but I feel like the best way to start so people can understand, like, the value that you bring and how to see things differently. Yeah. Like, what does it look like to... Well, how many artists have you, like, seen take off or songs well, have you got to get millions of streams just off of ass alone? Well, I'll say this, right? Since 2016, my agency... On average, yo, we break like at least one to two artists a year, whatever. Yeah. No, honestly, it's more like two, whatever. You feel me? Sometimes they spill over the, the the next year, whatever. But on average, two 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 artists every year, whatever. Um, we countless artists, millions of streams, whatever, millions of views, this and that, whatever. So when people say ads don't work, whatever, all they gotta understand is this: ads is just an opportunity for somebody to see your content. You know what I mean? At the end of the day, there's so many different forms of marketing inside this business, Dif different ways to skin a cat to get you the attention that you need as artists, whatever. But what a lot of artists don't understand is your content still has to be high quality. It still has to be good, yeah? you feel me? Yeah. So when they say ads don't work, okay, cool. These platforms are confusing. Sometimes it's it could be all about how you're setting up the campaigns because the, campa the platforms do put things in, in place to trick you, whatever, and make you do the wrong thing and spend spend more money, whatever, and not get the results you're looking for. That does happen, whatever. But on the same note, a lot of times, artists don't have their content together the right way. The look isn't believable. You know what I'm saying? This is about branding. This is about storytelling. I say it all the time, branding equals trust. When people see you do these ads, they have to believe you. They have to believe you. They have yeah. to believe your story. They have, you know what I mean? It has to be authentic, whatever. So a lot of people miss that part. You know what I'm saying? So ads do work. Lots of times, it's either... Your, 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 the way you approach the ads that it's not working, you know? Man, I ain't, I ain't gonna lie, man. I, I heard this somewhere. I, I don't know if it's true or not. You can remember it or not. But I heard you, you pop a card if you up for ads. I, I didn't. <laughs> I, I had some hands and I, I ran some campaigns for her, whatever, around the time she was coming up, you know what I'm saying? But I wouldn't say that it was, uh, simply my work that, 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 that built that up because at that time, that she had, uh, she had, she was making money off the, um, uh, actually, my, my guy, whatever, he was the one who, uh, had her sign, whatever, and, uh, when she was getting her bag, whatever, she invested a lot of that into radio advertising at that time, whatever. But also, we got to know that Cardi B wasn't just coming from nowhere. She already, she, she was already active on social media. She had her own platform, whatever. So I think it was a situation where people were sitting back waiting to see, like, yo, oh, um, you know, is, is it for real? You know what I'm saying? Once they saw it real, they all got behind it. But I did have a hand, like, running campaigns for her, whatever, early on in, in her career, whatever. You know what I'm saying? Oh. Um. But there are a few acts that are actually major that I did have their hands on, my hands on them. But we, sometimes we sign NDAs on that shit, so <laughs> they don't want it to be known that yo they had ads bumping their shit. So a lot of these artists, for the most part, that you don't think, you you feel like they just came out of nowhere. Nah, they didn't come out of nowhere. They had people like me or someone by else working in things like six to eight months behind the scenes, whatever. You know what I'm saying? So, That's crazy that you mentioned that because yeah. there's times where there's multiple things going on. And people don't know exactly where their impact is going yeah. from. So you might have a major artist. It could be smaller artists too. But yeah. we've seen campaigns where it might have ads. You'll see some, maybe a couple of influencer posts. The artist might be doing something organically. Yeah. Right? But the thing that's really moving them, the needle is the ads. Is it? Or some campaigns, it might be the influencers. But like, yeah. 
Like, it's crazy how it really could be one thing that's right, supposed right. to work, but the but, rest of it's just a vision. But you know how I look at it, though? Everything else is like, um, what's the word? It, it's, it's like, a, it's a holistic approach. Everybody thinks it's one main thing, whatever, right? Because if I'm just running the ads and the artist isn't active on their platforms, whatever, you know, they don't have other things going on, whatever, lots of times it's not going to come together. You know what I mean? The ads, the dope thing about ads is, is automate your process. So it means that, like, yo, Regardless what else you got going on, you know that, yo, wherever you're asleep or you're up, you're going to get your attention. People are seeing your content, whatever, you know what I'm saying? So it's a good backup for the most part, whatever. Sometimes it looks like it's leading the way, but it's a good backup to have. If you know that you're actively posting, whatever, yo, you know that somebody engaged with your, your your profile, they engage with the post that you're running, whatever, you know that we're targeted is going to catch it back and you can follow up and tap back into that audience. So it's just good. It's just a good thing to automate your whole process for the most part, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I, I like that, man. Because, like, in so many ways, if you're just doing one of these things, you can blow up with almost every single part of marketing by itself. Right. But whatever you do but with it by itself, you can probably do, like, five, ten times more right, if right. you're doing exactly. other things. It's, it's a big difference. But I know I've had certain clients where it was just strictly me, my ads, running the thing, whatever, and they got into a deal situation. And the deal was worth it was like seven figure plus, eight figure plus situation, whatever. You know just what off of ads. Just off of ads, whatever. You know what I'm saying? But it, is it really just the ads, whatever, yo? Nah, it's also that artist, you know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, being active on the stories, whatever, knowing how to engage with their audience, knowing who they're talking to, having their vision, their story locked in. A lot of you artists, whatever, and it's okay because y'all still learning, y'all coming up, whatever, but a lot of you artists don't know who y'all talking to. Y'all just throwing songs out there. Y'all throwing music out there and seeing what sticks. But when somebody knows what the hell they're talking about, you know what I'm saying, and they know like how to move on camera, or whatever. When I hit them ads behind, it hit so much different. It weighs so much more. You know what I'm saying? Yo? Yeah. So my thing by myself, I've been able to get people in situations. But you know, also the best situations is when they got uh somebody who's gonna uh reach out to certain platforms, get them in interviews, whatever. You know I'm saying they got a real publicist. I'm not talking about the publicists that 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 it gets you on a, a blog site or a website that's not even active. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm yeah, talking yeah. about the ones that create moments for you they'll get you interviews with a brand man showing they'll get you on a uh, on a red carpet somewhere they'll get you know what I'm saying it's a holistic approach whatever so I, I i never try to be like i'm the main thing whatever it's been that time few times whatever but i know the power of everything moving and sinking people being locked in you know what i'm saying you see so many campaigns and you and you always say the content has to be dope I'm a, I can guarantee somebody sees it. Yeah. Right? But if it's not dope, it's not dope. Right. What have you noticed in terms of the best content that you've seen really start to get results over the years? Yo, you know what's funny, though? Here's the thing, right? I tell people all the time, this, I keep on saying, I said earlier today, there's multiple ways to skin a cat. You know what I'm saying? What I mean by that is this. I'm not the only way to blow up. I'm not the only way to get action going. I'm not the only way with that, right? But if somebody come to me, your content needs to be compliant because we're at the mercy of the ad platform, Joe. You feel me? Sometimes artists, every artist I've created a bidding war for and got them in the deals worth seven figures, eight figures plus, whatever, right, yo? Guess what? They're willing to listen to me, right, yo? I tell them, yo, this intro needs to be chopped. Even though they made a whole drawn out story in the intro, one minute, 30 seconds, yo, they know they want to get it, they'll chop that whole thing, whatever. You know what I'm saying? I tell them, yo, it has to be compliant. We got to remove certain things out of the video to remove that. They'll have clean audio. A lot of artists who want, so many artists didn't know what I'd do, but they won't want to make those changes, whatever, right, yo? So what works the most is pretty much part compliant content with what I do. And then also like, yo, just not even like crazy videos, just simple. Like if the song is dope enough, the music is going to speak for itself, yo. The music is going to speak for itself, yo, you know what I mean? So you know you got to have all this craziness in the video. I've always seen like a simple video that looks authentic though. It looks like the lifestyle, it looks like the message that you're saying. You know what I'm saying? Right, it gotta right. be congruent with what you're talking about, yo. You know what I'm saying? Like people gotta see it, they gotta believe it, they gotta feel that like this is real. So authentic content, yo. That's what works the most as far as content. You know what I mean? And if you're coming to me and you're running the ads, compliancy, you know what I'm saying? Why not have your thing compliant? Why why we you know we're at the mercy of the platform? Why are we gonna do things to hinder our growth, whatever? The most terrible thing you can have is a campaign running for like six months. Millions of views. At that point, yo, the labels are already checking you. The research a and already tapping in because they got a uh, chart measure. They see your growth, whatever, and then uh, your, your thing's going out here. And then Google catches it, and out of nowhere, boom, it drops, whatever. Why would you want to do that to yourself, yo? You feel me? That's a real thing. It's, it's always crazy when it's running, and then it's it running, stops. Yeah, then it, yo, I tell people, yo, 
Yeah. Sometimes people come to me because, oh, James, we see your videos. You've been able to get so many dirty content going. This is, I'm like, yeah, we sometimes do that. And I always, but in my decks, my marketing, I'm like, yo, clean is predictable. We require you to run clean, whatever. Now, don't get twisted. If you come to this dirty content and you adamant about running the, I'll run it for you. But you're at the mercy of a platform yeah. catching it and killing your whole buzz. Now you got people in the room sitting down talking. Oh, this artist is it, yo. He about to be the next thing. We about to give him like five million this and that. We're building your whole career out. And then yo, your whole buzz dropped. And the person that's trying to sell you to the people upstairs can't even sell you no more because your momentum is clipped. Yo, you feel me? Yo, that's a huge what? thing. What? I don't think a lot of artists like understand if you're not in that position. Man. And it sucks because when they're having those conversations, it really is based off of a real time. Oh, man, for real. Like the constant, like I can say whatever I want to say, mm -hmm. but the selling is they're looking at the numbers. Like the that person does. that does it, that's not you. Yeah. Right. The other guy in the back that you're they selling to, yeah, exactly. they don't care. They just see numbers. Yo, and the moment that number look like it's slowing down. Oh, done, yo. It's funny because my, um, my partner Tamara in the corner, whatever, shout out to Tamara Wana, you know what I'm saying? She runs a lot of my campaigns now, like optimize them, make them go crazy, whatever, right? But, It'd be funny sometimes when clients would tell her, oh, it's not that dirty. <laughs> you feel I me? Mean? <laughs> you know, we like, yo, oh like, Jizz recommends it to be clean, whatever, before he touches it. Oh, it's not that dirty. Or, well, we see you run this and that. We seen Jizz get this going, this and that, blah, blah. And I'm like, I'm the one telling you guys, yeah, I ran mad campaigns. I got mad artists lit. But I'm telling you, all the bidding war situations I've created has been with compliant content, yo. So who are y'all to still question me? You feel I me? Mean? Yeah. Or question her. So, you know. People don't want to let that go, but... <laughs> I mean, I think it goes back to, like, I, I, which maybe they don't know. Uh, when they say, oh, I've seen some ads before that are, like, they got crazy stuff in the video and it's running. Yeah. But I don't think they, a lot of people understand what we just said, yeah. that it could get cut off after and, and it starts running. They miss stuff, but eventually... Eventually, yeah, I'm catch catching, yeah. yeah, they're going to catch it. Yo, I've had artists, whatever, who I've actually got. Been, it's funny, artists who I sometimes, I, I've got their content to go dirty or whatever, and they... Got their deal situation, whatever, yo. They went into their record deal, and then, like, probably, like, eight months after we done running the campaign, right, we'll get a notification from Google, like, oh, this is <laughs> this is disapproved for not, you know what I mean? <laughs> so they eventually will catch No matter you. what, yeah. It's about, like, but why play that game and be at the mercy of the platform? You feel me? Yeah. Yo? So, yeah. Yeah, man. It's about, like, honestly, yo, I, I, what I've seen over this year, over the years, this comes down to, like, comprehension. A lot of you guys, yo, did bad at reading comprehension in school. Y'all probably were the bad students that, like, yo, <laughs> handed in, like, record, uh, uh, essays, whatever, and because you didn't write it in blue pen ink, you got the F plus, whatever. You, you, it's about following directions and following the rules, whatever, to get what you want, and it's like, man, you know what I mean? Yeah. All right, so I want to give a reminder that being independent is not just about not being signed to a label. It's actually making money without being signed to a label, being able to have a sustainable career. And for those of y'all who actually want to be able to make money from your fan base, you're serious about figuring out how to monetize i have a free video that you can check out i don't need your email i don't need your phone number i don't need any information all you have to do is go to www.nolabelsnecessary.com slash monetize. And I'm going to show you the lies that artists have been told that have been keeping them, probably you too, from monetizing your fan base and how shifting that perspective has allowed one artist we're working with to be on track to make over $500,000 this year. This is a different era. Don't fall for that trap saying artists can't make money. Artists do not have to be broke. So if you want to escape that trap, go to www.nolabelsnecessary.com slash monetize. You do have to make sure you put the www in the beginning when you type it in your URL and watch this free video again. You're not going to be asked to put in your email. You're not going to be asked for your phone number, but it won't be up forever. Check it out. It makes me think about one side is content, the quality. Yeah. The other side are the choices. Yeah. All right. Right. And there's a lot of different choices we could get into. So let's just start here, right? If somebody who knows how to run an ad, you, you got the audience, the targeting and all that stuff. Yeah. Just keeping it general, because I know it's subjective to each artist. How do you feel about international versus na uh, domestic ads let's, today? Let's talk about that, right, yo? Boom. Let's talk about that, right? I've always said this from the beginning, right, yo? My business has never changed with this whatever, right, yo? At the end of the year, when you see the Spotify wrap-up, you never see an artist who blew up Oh, yeah, they blew with streams from one country, yo. It's always like 93, 90, whatever, some country, whatever, right? So you have to run international to pop, yo. 
to get to you cannot make it with just USA alone, yo. You feel me? You can't do it at all, yo. I've never seen that happen. It has to be, and guess what? When shit take off, whatever, it's always other countries involved in what's right. The thing about running international with ads is this, yo. You have to run relevant, yo. It's not about padding numbers, yo. It's not about, yo, we're gonna get 50 million cooks from Zimbabwe, this and that, whatever. You know what I'm saying? Now, if Zimbabwe had a way to monetize, you know what I'm saying, the music that you're, you're, you're presenting to them, whatever, yo, then cool, let's go to Zimbabwe. Yeah. But no, we're gonna run to places that can actually, like, yo, support our music through streams, whatever, you know what I'm saying? Can support our number and it can matter, you know what I'm saying? So when I run international, I run relevant. Uh, obviously, USA and Canada, North America has to be the number one thing, whatever, because you got, you got, you, you get a list of all the countries that you run to, whatever, you know what I'm saying? So a good sign to me is when we, before even optimization and before optimization, when we start like checking those numbers, whatever, and we see that off rip, USA and Canada are like the number two countries, whatever, off rip, whatever, and then everything else can follow, whatever. So it's about basically running relevant and make sure home is tapped in, whatever, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. 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 It's good to hear that, man, because I mean, people only look at international ads as like spammy yeah, stuff those, like that yeah but those people yeah but those people not really they're yeah, not yeah. really doing it they don't understand yeah 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 I mean? when if somebody come to me yo when somebody come to me yo and they be like yo i want a usa canada i'm like i right. <laughs> you, you, you clearly know more than me customers always right so i'm gonna give you what but if you want me to do it how i do it yo how, how it turns things up whatever yo yeah. you gonna let me mix that in you know what I'm saying? Because right. at the end of the day, it's a global village, man. It's a whole global village. Yeah. And if it's on what you're trying to accomplish and what you get, yeah. where you want to go, so it's like you'll see people talk about just doing one particular place or maybe just U.S. and they will have success. Like no, some of them are having success, no. but it's just like, but how big it, do you want to? No, be? But, but I'm saying, no, it's also what you're trying to accomplish too, though, right? If you, if your whole thing, because we have a situation where it's like, yo, okay. Let's start in just the U.S. for start in a certain region to get that artist so lit in that region yes. and spread out. You know, it's all about strategy. Yo. There's no one way to go inside this thing. That's why, like, yo, we don't have cookie cutter things, whatever, yo. As cookie cutters, this is the most cookie cutter our campaigns go, right, yo? When we start off, yo, we start broad as fuck, whatever, yo. And then after we run it for a while, then we whittle shit down. Then we optimize, whatever. But there's no cookie cutter way to move this shit, whatever. It's about strategy, like, yo. Do you want to go from the response or do you want to go from the standpoint of starting from local and then blowing up? Or do you want to just, I think it's better anyway, just to start wide as fuck, whatever, and then cut back down, whatever. You feel me? As opposed to the other way, whatever. But yeah. it's, it's strategy when it comes to this thing. You know what I mean? Wow. Oh, what's up? It's Brand Man Sean. And if you like this clip, you can listen to the full episode on Spotify, Apple, or wherever you stream your podcast. But if you want to keep watching, we've placed a video that will be so useful for you conveniently above Go ahead and click that link.